Tiffany machine coming up in just a little bit. It's round number 12. I'm going to toss it on over to the booth for more action here from day number two. Thank you very much, Maria. Ailey Looney alongside Corey Baumeister ready to jump into what is going to be a battle of the ages between yes. Nathan Stoyer and Luis Scott Vargas, the old guard, as it were, and yeah. the new reigning world champion who is on an absolute heater. He cannot be stopped, but if anyone can, Luis Scott Vargas. Yeah, it's going to be someone well who started playing Magic, you know, eight years before Nathan was alive, <laughs> can probably have a bit of an advantage here. But yeah, like you were saying, Nathan has just been winning everything. So, you know, Luis is definitely one of those players that has done the same. Yeah. Nathan is looking to maybe join the ranks of Luis as someone who has top aided three premier events in a row. Luis top aided three pro tours in a row back in the day. Unbelievable. Nathan trying to do it here this weekend. Unbelievable stuff, and uh, we did see a bit of um, controversy over the intentional draw, the desk discussing <laughs> yes. that just before this matchup. So, you know, that leads a lot of people to start thinking, okay, 11, 4, and 1 yeah. might be okay for top 8, but we'll have to wait, we'll have to see how the numbers shake out. And uh, yeah, like Nathan said, he'll either look really smart or a little silly at the end of it. But exactly. let's see. If he just keeps winning, you know, 12 wins, you're good. Easy. Yeah, then the draw is kind of a loss for both player, and then they get there on hard mode. That would be the ultimate flex. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> X4 and 1, a, a decent shot, or at least possible, mm. uh, to make it in as well. So only time will tell. Well, let's get this underway right. as we have a Blood Tithe Harvester up against Reckoner Bankbuster for Nathan Storr at the bottom of your screen. Rectus Midrange, Grixis Reanimator, both of these red and black based decks. The big bads of the weekend, the ones yep. to beat and uh, putting up the results as well. Yeah, absolutely. And two of the big teams as well mm -hmm. kind of going at it. We see this Rakdos deck, which it's the numbers are undeniable, yeah. you know, that we were bringing up, um, that Monty was bringing up there at the desk. But, you know, this Grixis Reanimator is definitely an innovative take on the deck. Team CFB was a little split. Mm -hmm. You know, they weren't all saying we're playing at Rakdos Reanimator like Team Handshake. So that kind of leads me to believe that, you know, Luis's deck is not maybe as perfect as uh, Nathan's is for the event. Oh, we'll have to see at the end of the day how the uh, win rates shake out. But uh, for the time being, things looking pretty good here as uh, our poor little treasure goblin is cut down. So off to death it goes. But uh, Fable the Mirror Breaker now allowing Nathan Stoyer to discard a couple cards and draw. So let's see what gas we can get. Swamp and a Braid in hand. And what does he find at the top? Swamp and Sulphur Springs. So not what you want to be finding yeah. off of the second chapter of the Fable. Yeah, Nathan definitely flooding a bit there. And Luis not having the, you know, the perfect draw of mm -hmm. being able to reanimate here on turn four, uh, thanks to Fable treasure tokens and Cruelty of Gix. But that invasion of Amakent with the Atraxa in the yard, yeah. if you're able to deal enough damage to that card, uh, this game could be, you know, over before it begins. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Atraxa resolving, mm, that's bad news, Bears, yes. for anybody on the receiving end of that. But uh, I'm gonna kill it. This Blood Tithe Harvester going to get three points of damage in. Nathan's story down to 14. Here comes Fable the Mirror Breaker. So the Goblin is back for some loot. It's crazy how fast these players are firing off Was a removal back for spell. Some loot and now dead. Exactly. <laughs> firing off a removal spell on these Shaman tokens when yeah. Fable still leaves around other stuff. Just yeah. happy to be two for one to, because the card is so good. Nice. Here comes Shildred the Apocalypse. She jumps into the Bank Buster and gets smashing here up against Luis Scott Vargas. We're going to see another cut down taking care of one of Nathan Story's creatures. That is the reflection of Kikijiki. Now, back in the bin is the Fable. So there's a big draw step here for Luis. If Luis wants to go for either go for the throat on Shieldred so yeah. you can draw these cards off Fable, or has the option of trying to just really find Cruelty of Gix to bring back Atraxa. Yeah. Recognizing at 13 life, you can't really mess around too much. Yeah, deal with the, the clear and present danger in Shieldred the Apocalypse, so that is taken care of. And uh, in the bin, and here is the invasion of Amonkhet. And that is going to be Atraxa in disguise. Yep, Atraxa, the Atali is in the graveyard as well. Invasion of Amonkhet would have been absolutely busted in this deck if it had three <laughs> loyalty where you could attack it with Harvester. Oh man, yeah, that would just be, that would, it would have to be a rare then, right? Yeah, I would think so, or a mythic or something, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But it does take two attacks from Harvester to be able to deal with that and flip it into an Atali. Yeah. Alrighty, so the invasion is down to one defense. 
Ooh, and just all lands for Nathan. Nathan has yeah, not drawn rough. a spell here in a long time. Yeah, this isn't looking super hot for Nathan. And uh, just all gas Ooh. from Luis Scott Vargas as the battle is now flipped. Lazatep convert 4-4, yeah. four, four. so a formidable foe as is, but yeah, it's just going to do some more dumb stuff here, courtesy of the graveyard of Luis. And here is this innovation from the Rakdos-style reanimator decks in full effect here. Lazatep convert, converting itself into a Traxa here to draw four cards mm -hmm. for the low, low price of uh, three <laughs> mana and six damage. Really impressive interaction. Yeah, now that's sweet. Able to refill the hand there. And have Luis be able to have his mana free. You know, yeah. like having this invasion carry over its value into the next turn. Oh, that's awesome. I uh, can't really be undersold as well. Yeah, no. Uh, Luis is just uh, putting foot here, <laughs> looking to get this game over and done with ASAP. You know, we, we often talk about how fast Luis is at <laughs> his play. You know, he, yeah. he just can get a game over before you blink. Yep, and I believe this is what we call doing it yeah. for sure here oh, in yeah. this. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Invoke Despair. Okay. Yeah. Might be a little late, but it is definitely something to do here for Nathan Stoyer as he'll be able to uh, get at least a card off of it. Get two permanents off the yeah. battlefield, too. Land go. Yeah, the best draw in the deck, probably, yeah. but still just nowhere near enough power level to uh, be fully caught up in this situation. And there's a Cruelty of Gix off the top. Now Luis is going to have the option <laughs> of um, a Trax uh, number two or a Tali if it's Dino time. I hope we see Reed ahead as a... Oh, it's Dino time. <laughs> that's such a cool mechanic on the sagas. I love that permanent type, and that's going to be it. <laughs> Nathan Storer has seen enough. So to game two we go. Now post sideboard, which deck yes. gets better here in this matchup? Definitely Nathan's deck. Because uh -huh. we see this rotten reunion, you have other hand disruption spells uh -huh. that you can pair with Nathan's aggressive draws, okay, where you can really put Luis in a rough spot. Because Luis's deck does really rely on non-creature cards. So going up to four duress is going to be awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And you still have Graveyard Trespasser and stuff to interact with the Graveyard. So definitely Nathan, but Luis's deck is still excellent here. Well, game's underway. Nathan Stoyer attempting an attack with uh, the Blood Tithe Harvester, but that is dealt with swiftly by Luis Scott Vargas. Okay, so we have Liliana here as well as a land, but it's slightly awkward when you're paired up against the reanimation strategy because if mm -hmm. Luis doesn't have Blood Tithe Harvester or Fable, some way to discard a gigantic creature, yeah. now you just gave him one. Yep. So decides to fire off the duress instead of being mana efficient and having Liliana. Nathan really wanted Luis to just play a Blood Tithe Harvester there to get the sacrifice a creature ability going instead. Yeah, I was thinking about that. So Duress is going to take a look in the hand, find the Cruelty of Gix, a couple lands, go for the throat, and Nahiri's Warcrafting. What a cool card. That card has been pretty sweet. Really sweet, especially with Invasion, mm. where Warcraft gets you, not only destroys it straight away, but you're able to at least reveal the top card. And if it's a land and you haven't played one yet, you get extra value yeah. uh, off of it already. So, yeah, really strong card in this deck. Yeah, it's super sweet. And, you know, if you really aren't desperate, you can just kill a one toughness thing and then go digging even further in the library. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, late game if you top deck yeah. that when you have like six, seven mana and you can like cast a shield right off of it or something, ends up being <laughs> awesome. Super well designed card, so no surprise to see it here. As, uh, both players now, Chandra in hand. There's a rotten reunion that you were mentioning right. off the sideboard, so the instant speed interruption for uh, the reanimation strategy. Yep, absolutely. But the one thing that's a problem is no land, so the blood mm. is almost assuredly going to go away. Probably getting rid of Liliana. Liliana is really good in some situations. Yeah. Not, not really so in a reanimator uh, scenario as yeah. much. But the land pickup there was great. Able to make your land drops. It's super important here. You know, Marshall and Paul, I think, were talking about it yesterday. The person to do the big dumb thing first <laughs> usually wins. So. That's put so elegantly yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. We like big dumb things. I mean, come on. Yep. And there's... <laughs> Invoke Despair. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. nice. There's Just running lands. casual six damage. Love it. <laughs> and draw three is excellent. And I believe, nice. Ailey, we just saw the beautiful oh. combination of a Light Up the Night and Chandra Ooh. in hand. So That makes me very happy indeed. <laughs> a Braid, go for the throat. And here he's Warcrafting. And another go for the throat. And hand your for Luis. So a very reactive hand at the moment. And here comes Chandra. 
And Chandra is going to take over here. Luis does have access to some counter spells. Mm -hmm. Luis is playing Grixis, where normally you would play like Make Disappear in the deck, Chandra, but yeah. when you're playing a, um, a Tali where you can That's flip smart. over your own counter spells, oh, yeah. it ends up not being very good. That's super good indeed. Yeah. So just using the plus one ability XI in the top five cards, they're going to hang out in exile, so available again to Nathan Stoyer. So. Things looking really, really good here for the defending Dude, world champion. And uh, that's going to be it. That's enough, <laughs> you know, just flooded in advantage. Yeah, yeah these two goats just uh, really playing oh, close games so far. Yeah. <laughs> really playing close games. All right, looks like Luis did mulligan to six here. <laughs> It kind of felt like, you ever seen those slap fights? Sure where the guys just stand opposite I the have. table? Yeah, yes, so yes. We've, we've done a slap a piece now, so let's see if we get into a, a good old fist fight here between yeah, these two players. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, man. I love the banter between these players. Yeah. A lot of respect for each other. Definitely. There we go. Picks up the hand of four lands, two invokes. So if Nathan can fill that curve, this is a great hand. But if not, if you don't do anything until turn five, it's not ideal. But on the flip side, Luis does not have a very, you know, great yeah, hand doing much either. either. Yeah, it's and no kind of red either. Go. Yeah. It's not looking hot for Luis. Yeah, oh, Razor Lash Transmogrid. That's a nice pickup. Nice. <laughs> Luis is like, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that, that guy can put you on a clock yeah. real quick, but uh, Reckon a Bank Buster, that's a great card to find. Great top deck as well. One turn behind, but still mm -hmm. plenty fine. Not mm -hmm. too shabby. Fable in hand now for Luis, too. So, still no red mana, like you mentioned, though. Has to find a red source, please. And another curve filler there for Nathan, which is excellent here. And no land oh, drop for Luis. No land at all. Man, that is brutal. Raise the last transmogger, and now the Blood Tithe Harvester getting in there. Six points of damage. Uh -huh. This is an incredibly quick clock here for Nathan Stoyer. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, boy. Yeah. Go for the throat. has <laughs> got some work to do here. Oh, Just bank buster. I think Nathan Jeez. is basically thinking, okay, what is the best card I could possibly mm -hmm. draw? And summons it to the top of the library. Outside of Fable the Mirror Breaker on turn three there. Right, He's pretty red. much drawn exactly what you would want. Stormcarve Coast. So we got the Blood Tile Harvester, we have a blocker, and we also have the Go for the Throat to be able to deal with one of these creatures. Now Nathan has double invoke for the next two turns. Unbelievable. Oh, and maybe Chandra, <laughs> Chandra too. Why not? Goodness. I think the game oh. might be over before Chandra makes an appearance, yeah. honestly. No kidding. Or it's going to be that final blow, like take five to the face yeah. to, uh, to finish this off. Because Jeez. even this invoke, you can invoke animate. Is four at the moment. Yeah, you can animate Bankbuster or whatever, but yeah, you're still taking four. So double invoke plus Chandra is enough damage straight away. Nathan just needs the time to do so. Yeah, this is rough. We're going to see a sacrifice here, get this blocker out the way in response, the crew. So before it's dying breath is. <laughs> it's going to crew up that Bankbuster. There's a creature. Where do we go from here for Nathan Stoyer? Yeah, Nathan was trying to get some information, maybe if there was a counter spell across the way. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't really, it's not super telling if that is sacrificed, but looks like, yeah, you bank buster to draw a card four, and yeah, then seven. take a yeah. ton of damage. Yeah, down to seven for Luis. Jeez. Wow. That was blitzingly fast. Wow. Nathan Stoyer just, <laughs> well, Yep, I said Luis had a good chance of taking him down. I was wrong. Yeah, and <laughs> I mean, unbelievable stuff. You know, that was just a case of Nathan had his hand picked apart there at the early stages of the game with that duress for mm -hmm. the fable, which really bridged the gap from three to five for invoke, and uh, you know was left with no real medium plays. Drew a couple two drops off the top at a timely spot, and it was just too much for Luis, who already mulliganed that game as well. So. The good old Rakdos speed down does it again, friends, yeah. and we're going to see plenty more of that after this break. So don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to coverage of Pro Tour March of the Machine from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thank you so much for, for joining us today as we are in day two of competition. It is the standard portion of the event and things are off to a blazingly quick start yep. already as we just saw Luis Scott Vargas and Nathan Stoyer duke it out. And uh, speaking of Duke, He's our next feature. Friends. Nice transition. Oh, thank you. That was Look real at me. Good. You'd swear I was a professional or something. <laughs> Reed Duke, our reigning Pro Tour champion from PT Phyrexia, is up against Alan Wu, Pro Tour 25th anniversary winner yeah. as well, alongside Greg Orange. And uh, both these players at 8 and 3. Now, we watched Reed Duke yesterday, didn't have the best start in the draft round, starting at 0 and 2. But yep. Rallied back now, he's eight and three, he's still looking good. You know, that's one person I've watched Reed play Magic for, you know, basically my entire career, and he's one of the most non-frazzled Magic yeah. players I've ever seen. Keeps an even keel, never gets tilted, really. No, not at all. Um, or at least if he does, he keeps it to himself very well. So he's an incredible player to watch uh, his composure at yeah. the highest level. Yeah, no, absolute excellent Magic player, one of the best. Yeah. Hall of Famer, you know, <laughs> I actually chatted to him at the registration. I was like, so world champ next? He was like, well, you know, maybe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we'll see. As that uh, is something that players are looking forward to, but for now their focus is on the Pro Tour March yep. of the Machine here this weekend. Getting things underway here. Good old Blood Tithe Harvester Good and the one. Bank Buster on the board, followed up by Fable the Mirror Breaker, something you're going to see lots of this weekend as the most played decks. Absolutely, and Reed didn't necessarily have the biggest uh, vote of confidence when he came into this deck with this, uh, came into this tournament with this deck. Mm -hmm. Gave himself a two out of 10 as far as how much he liked his deck. Wow. Going into this tournament, but you know, this has still been a really strong deck. We saw Jim Davis mm -hmm. go five and zero oh yesterday with the exact 75, and it's just doing a little bit more over the top things than yeah. traditional Rakdos decks with the really powerful combination of Chandra, Hope, Beacon, and, and breach the multiverse. Yeah. You know, w when these players are assessing the metagame, there's always the question of, okay, what's next? Yeah. What do we do to beat what's currently being done? And yeah. this has been the reanimation strategy, you know, breach yeah. the multiverse, getting these massive beaters out of the graveyard and stealing your opponent's stuff while you're at it. Yeah, absolutely. And tested with Louis Scott Vargas, mm -hmm. who we just saw on a little bit different version. Unlike this Rakdos mid-range deck that we've been seeing from Team Handshake, they're not really all consensus thinking yeah, yeah. which version's best. Uh, and, and Reed decided to go against Luis Scott Vargas on this uh, deck choice. I can imagine it's difficult to get a big team of players to all agree on something, you know, oh, especially yeah. when it's like, you know, 12 to 20 players in a team. Exactly. And some <laughs> people just have their individual preference yeah. on style of decks. So, yeah, very rare do, you know, from experience on some of these testing teams that we've all been on one yeah. deck. And if we are, it's usually a really, really strong deck. <laughs> I love the one thing that Reed Duke said in an interview with Cedric it's yesterday. It's like, oh, well, Fable the Mirror Breaker, that's the first four cards. It's Check the other you know, 56, 56 that, that are tough. <laughs> difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, totally uh, agree. I mean, that's how I would have approached this uh, yeah. event as like, well. Okay, that's the starting point. Let's get my lands in. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, invoke despair, courtesy of the treasure there from the little goblins. So that is going to get some cards for Reed Duke, a couple of yep. them, and deal some damage to Alan Wu. He's down to 11 already. And Reed made a conscious decision there to harvest down the token before mm -hmm. Invoke Despair. The Invoke Despair would have cleaned it up already and you would have got through more damage. Yeah. That leads me to believe that Reed just wanted some more cards, maybe didn't have the best follow-up after this. Sure. If you're able to uh, kill some stuff and get some cards, why not? Untap, draw, let's see what Reed Duke finds here, if he can get this game one over and done with here. Yep, and this is a much more traditional list from Alan Wu that we've mm -hmm. seen from Grixis midrange before. The old four Invoke Despair, three Make Disappear, as well as a couple yeah. one-ofs here and there like Blade Coil Serpent, but really your more vanilla style <laughs> deck uh, that we've been seeing for a while. Uh, Alan Wu definitely just yeah. wants to have a little bit of agency on the draws and be able to interact at all stages of the curve. Certainly not as much spice as we've seen in a couple of the other uh, not really, red black yeah. base decks. And I believe, uh, you know, Alan Wu, when he won this Pro Tour with other teammates, was playing Death and Taxes. Oh, yeah? Yep, in Legacy. So maybe not the spiciest deck, but a very <laughs> efficient one at that. Hey, if it gets the job done, you're not going to complain about what you played. And it did indeed do that. <laughs> so he's very comfortable playing in this building, that's for sure. Another Fable the Mirror Breaker down to join its goblin-y friends. 
drawing some cards here from Alan Wu. Another counter off of the Bank Buster. Really needs something here to get himself back into this game. But at the moment, it looks like Reed Duke is just running away with game one of this matchup. One card to look out for. Alan Wu does have one Brotherhood's End in yeah. the main Ooh. deck. That would be excellent here. But yeah, Very outside good. of that, Shieldred or something to come back and hope Reed doesn't have a removal spell. Yeah. Bang. Hey, Brotherhood's <laughs> End, you called it. All right. Wow, you have seen through the future. I had it. <laughs> Professionals over here, I guess. I know, huh? right? Look at us. We're so good. <laughs> that was a huge, that was great. huge exchange yeah. here. That is going to slow Reed down. You know, no bank buster on his side, so just pop something and in and keep uh, smacking. So he's going to have to rebuild a little bit here. Oh, a braid. This is going to be really interesting, Ailey, to see. Okay, so that just okay. screams to me, I have a make disappear. Yeah. If you're Alan Wu. Like, otherwise, you're drawing a card for sure. So Reed's got to be really wary if he does have the powerful yeah. seven drop here, Breach, that, uh, you know, you can't really fire it off too easily. Yeah. Great play there by Reed Duke. So let's see what his follow up is. Discard and drawing, courtesy of Chapter 2 of the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Yeah, I would expect something a lot more if you have six mana available, playing something mm -hmm. like Shieldred here, uh, not walking into it. But you never know. Alan Wu is such a special player as well that it could easily be within his range to not sacrifice it, yeah. thinking Reed will think I have make disappear, you know? Yeah, yeah. The constant levels of these top-level professionals. Yeah. You know, when you're at this level, you're not always just focusing on your game plan. Yeah. You always have to make your opponent do the thing you want them to do. Yes, exactly. It's a very difficult skill to learn, but these players know it all too well. Walking the dog, as I like to say. Oh, kind of yeah? walk your Just opponent into. Your opponent. Hello, hi, yes. yes, come here. <laughs> I have cookies. Would you like one? Or I have a dog. I have a cute dog. Come and pet it. You know, like, that's, that's how you get them. Got it. Okay, so I can then just cycling. That's not going to get uh, interacted with at all, but two yeah. little itty-bitty one-ones. And another way to pressure, you know, quote unquote, pressure a make disappear in these mm -hmm. scenarios is to just present damage to Alan Wood to the, to the point okay. where Alan has to start killing the creatures yeah. and then maybe tap out and not have make disappear available. Looks like Reed, what Reed is trying to yeah. do in this situation. Cut short, limiting the damage. So just one point delivered to Alan Wu there. Big draws now here for him. As he wants to try and uh, get back into this, just get a foothold and start fighting back here against Reed Duke. Yeah, and a reminder, these players are at eight and three with mm -hmm. five rounds to go. So to lock that up, you got to win four yeah. out of five here. So no easy task, but starting mm -hmm. off with a loss here, you know, and then losing one more round throughout the uh, last five rounds yeah, of constructed puts you in a rough spot. So this is a big round for these players. Reflection of Kiki Jiki flips. One more point of damage delivered to Alan Wu. All righty, I'm waiting for something big from Alan's side. I can feel it. Something's coming. Yeah, yeah. It really seems like Alan is prioritizing casting spells and basically setting aside two mana for mm -hmm. a counter spell and seeing what you can cast for the rest. So something like if we get to seven mana, I wouldn't be too surprised if we see Invoke Despair fired yeah. off with a counter spell available. Sounds like a good plan, using his life as a resource, just taking a couple points of damage. Has to be wary now, though, of reflection of Kiki Jiki. He needs to remove this, otherwise whatever is landing next from Reed Duke can get copied. Yep, absolutely. Something large here, looks like a Shieldred. four drop. Shieldred. Shieldred hits the battlefield with two mana available, still yeah. playing around what is as close to a face-up make disappear as yeah. you can get. Oh, man. Is it even worth it to fire it off now, or is it just a... Card, just hang to out just sack a treasure, <laughs> probably not worth it, um, you know, in this situation, unless Alan does have two make disappears. Then it is definitely okay. worth thinking about. Okay. Just a pause here from the players. Or something like channel Silkins in and then make yeah, disappear. Yeah, sure, sure. That'd be a cute play. Oh, that'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> There's no getting out of that one. That's a shield off the board. <laughs> That's right. Three cards asked and told from Reed. All righty, Alan, what you got? Big think about this Shieldred and, uh, you know, rightfully so. Mm. There's a lot of big things that get put on the stack when Shieldred comes oh, for into sure. play. Uh, one of the most powerful cards in Standard. So Shieldred on the stack here still, I believe. Alan yes. deciding what to do about it. Resolve okay, and end. 
cut down. Cool. All right, let's get rid of that little guy. So Fable the Mirror Breaker back in the bin. Just untaps, oh no go for the throat at end step, anything like that. Allen is playing four of those, which mm. is exactly what you would fire off immediately yeah. against that shield right if you could. Before the damage is dealt, definitely. Yeah. And another card that would be phenomenal here if it wasn't for this Sokinzin that was channeled mm -hmm. would be Invoke Despair. Just yeah. deal with Shieldred like that. But Just get off the board immediately. But uh, yeah. alas, that's not going to be the case. Nothing in hand of Alan Wu's. Nothing in Alan Wu's hand, I should say. So, yeah, just a pretty clean victory there in the yep. first game for Reed Duke. So, game number two, post board time. Similar situation to the game we just watched, or. What Pretty do you think? similar. Usually the reanimator style decks are the ones that don't change that much mm -hmm. when it comes to these kind of Rakdos uh, pseudo mirrors here. But from Alan Wu, you have more negates if you want to bring that in for cruelties. Um, you have some extra duresses, an extra bank buster, and some disdainful strokes. So I bet Alan, Alan Wu's deck is going to get a little bit more blue. A little bit more blue. A little bit more blue. Yeah. Hopefully not sad blue, though. Yeah, so. and it depends. Alan will be getting a little bit of blue as well if he doesn't <laughs> win this game here to force a game number three. Mm. Invoke Despair takes on a whole new meaning uh, if this doesn't go as planned here for <laughs> Alan Wu post board, but kicking things off nicely as uh, we see Reckoner Bankbuster hit the board. Bankbuster, excellent. Reed, Duke only having two abrades in the 75 as a straightaway answer to this. Otherwise, you know, you really just have to let it do its course here. Yeah. Um, and just a tap land as a follow-up here. Leads me to believe that Reed would have a cut down in play. That's what I would be thinking mm -hmm. if you start Swamp into tap land. Yeah. Or you just drew it, one of the two. <laughs> Gonna draw some cards here for Alan, so getting himself set up nicely. Extra resources in hand. Fable the Mirror Breaker on turn three. I yep. love to see it for Reed Duke. Reed was super happy about that main phase draw from Bankbuster. Mm. That also telegraphs quite a bit of information. One, you might not have land. That's the most likely yeah. thing. Or two, you're trying to find a duress to be able to deal with Fable. But it definitely yeah. means Alan didn't have blue mana plus make disappear available as well. So every decision like this, these players really focus on because yeah. you bleed information throughout every single game of Magic when it comes to standard. Such valuable skill to have in another main phase draw off the bank buster. So what are we digging for here? I think I just heard the word discard. Oh. Yeah, that really you know uh, screams out the whole land problem was yeah. correct. Oh my goodness, that is unfortunate for Alan Wu. Yep. And now what this could mean for Reed, I saw Tali in hand at the start of the hand, almost uh -huh. assuredly going to the yard. If there's cruelty and a land, that could have been the case. Looks like didn't want to discard the powerful card, probably not leading to that combination. Yeah, so just the cut down. You called it as well. You, Getting discarded. Here comes two points of damage, the treasure being created. Where do we go from here? Land number four, so five mana to work with. But for now, just going to be a braiding oh. on the draw engine and a bank yeah. buster. Just to rub a little salt in the wound there for Alan Wu. Can he find a land to get into this matchup. And most importantly, abrading that before it's able to create the treasure, yeah. which would unlock would blue mana at least to help. But Shivan right. Reef puts a little hope in this game here for Alan Wu. Yeah, okay. So we got blue mana online. That's great news for Alan Wu. And then a braid in response to the abrade <laughs> from <laughs> Reed Duke. So both bank busters. Been busted. Yeah, super busted. <laughs> All right. I believe I did see the Itali um, when Reed flashed his hands right away. Um, not 100%, but if it is there, five mana plus that Shaman attack will make it available to be cast. Now, mm -hmm. Reed probably won't jam that into a deck that's going to have five possible counter spells for it right now oh. with two Disdainful Stroke and Make Disappear. The four attacks even go for the throat, so yep. get out of there. No ramping for you. And that still does the same thing. That still counters Atali in a way yeah. because it makes it just uncastable if you don't have that extra treasure. So just four mana. Big score. Big score. Oh, nice. nice. Okay. Yeah. Reed Duke said those words quite a bit at the last <laughs> Pro Tour. Pairing is it creativity with big score. Said, you know yeah. what? It works so well with me. It led to Reed's, well, biggest score here yeah. in the Pro Tour. Decided to play that card once again, thanks to Seth Manfield and his deck building. <laughs> 
Here we're going to see a Blood Tithe Harvester post big score. So things looking very good here indeed. Another Brotherhood's end for Alan Wu would be excellent just to keep control of these creatures. But there might be a big old dinosaur come stop. And if there was a glass of water on Alan's uh, table, <laughs> you hear the dun 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 yeah. dun dun. Yeah, Must absolutely. Some ripples starting. <laughs> there may be an Atali approaching. It's definitely been putting a lot of ripples in people's win rates, that's yeah. for sure. When you cast that card, it Holy. has a rippling effect <laughs> on the first number of your record, I must say. <laughs> All right, here, the door is open Ooh. for Atali. Are we going to see a big old dinosaur? I think so, friend. Yep. Oh, there we go. There it is. Itali Primal Conqueror comes a smashing its way <laughs> through. <laughs> Oh no, Blade Call Serpent and another <laughs> Blood Tithe Harvester. So it's Goodness just me. It's just a vanilla 5-4. It doesn't get the bonuses no. when cost off just a a four. But still good pretty good. Grief. Oh boy. Alan, I'm wow. This is just unlucky draws and <laughs> the top of the deck just yeah. Adding insult to injury here now, too. But, I mean, what are you going to do against a big old dinosaur? Exactly. And no fault to Alan's keep. We didn't get to see no. exactly what it was. But it was almost assuredly two land and a bank buster. Yeah. yeah. And that's pretty good. Yeah. You know, you can draw through, find your lands, your colors, get that sorted. But, jeez, like... Oi, oi. Okay. So, making copies. <laughs> Dealing some beats. Oh, gross. You could even copy a Tali if you wanted. That's... Hmm. No, you can't. Oh, you can't. Legendary. legendary. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that would I be always, incredible. <laughs> always make that mistake. No, you cannot copy the dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely not. But um, oh, boy. You, you can get somewhat close to flipping this. I guess the treasures are gone. Those are bloods instead. So not really looking to flip it for no, a while. No, do you need to flip it? You don't. No, you really don't in this situation. Mm -hmm. Alan doesn't really have a way to mass remove these creatures when there's multiple creatures with four toughness or higher. Yeah. So Brotherhood's End, which there's only one of in the main, will I'm only deal with three much. creatures, <laughs> but not the ones that matter. Not at all. Ooh. Four toughness. Two invoked despairs to the yard. <laughs> oh, Alan, man, that is so rough. But Reed Duke just delivering the beats there and getting the job done in a clean 2-0 against his opponents. So. Reed Duke, another person who just never seems to lose. He just keeps winning and winning. Really doesn't. You know, Reed Duke coming back from that 0-2 start. So that does mean a couple of things that if Reed doesn't get to 12 wins, his breakers cannot be good. You know, when you start 0-2, yeah. your breakers are going to be really bad. So Reed will probably need to hit those 12 wins, yeah. which will mean a 3-1 record or better here for the reigning world champion. Just keep your fate in your own hands. Get the 12 exactly. wins. Go enjoy Magic Con. we got more Magic here, friends. Let's jump into another feature match. This is going to be game three of Ricardo Biava and Karis Kakitis. We saw rocking it yesterday. So let's jump in and see how these 8-2-1 and one players are doing thus far. All right, coming in to this match, we do have Karis as uh, their first pro tour here with yeah. <laughs> eight wins here in a great spot so uh, cool. to make a deep run in this pro tour. It's been a really impressive story uh, to watch this unfold. Both players keeping on seven. Karis on that really innovative take of Grixis that plays mm. zero invoke despairs yeah. and really just a lot more low to the ground permanence. Yeah, I like that a bunch. And then the Jeskai control deck. And Jeskai control from Ricardo that we saw a little bit of yesterday at the end of the of the day. Yeah, <laughs> it just seems like, are you playing two colors? Could I interest you in red for, uh, <laughs> you know, Fable the Mirror Breaker, the best card in the format? Yeah, I really think that card is truly going to make it in standard here. You know, I don't I think, think it's just so a flash too. in the pan. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like that uh, Nathan Story guy, you know? Yeah, Not yeah, just a absolutely. Not just flash in the pan at all. I, uh, <laughs> I don't think that's possible with his results already. No, no, no. Uh, basically a Hall of Fame career so, already. Yeah. Yes. And he's been on the scene for such a little amount of time. You know, I remember at PT Phyrexia, he was just so excited. He's like, my first Pro Tour top eight. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, oh, yeah, I, he I guess oh, it yeah, technically he made his was. <laughs> after you won the World Championship, you're just starting from the top, you know? <laughs> yeah, you usually start the other way around where mm -hmm. you top eight a Pro Tour and then you win the World Championship. <laughs> All righty. The rest taking a look in hand. Flame Blessed Bolt, we got uh, Destroy Evil, Memory Deluge yep. 2 there. Flame Blast Bolt, a really important card for these Jeskai control decks because, well, the mana base has to be basically all non-basics. Yeah. So 
Transmogrin is just going to run rampant against this yeah. control deck. Counterspell's not so good against them, so you gotta exile that card. Oh, yeah. Exile effects seem to be uh, one of the key things this weekend with the amount of graveyard interactions happening. Yes, 100%. All right, big think about this duress. A lot of good cards. You can either take the counter spell. Memory Deluge is a really interesting one here as well, just mm -hmm. because if Ricardo were to draw a land, being able to stop the two cards being drawn is pretty big. Yeah. So if you take Memory Deluge, that probably means you're gearing up for the long game. Yeah. You know, and I would take that information if I was Ricardo, that my opponent doesn't necessarily have a fast draw, maybe not a lot of Transmogrants, because if you did, that Flame Blast Bolt would probably be taken, yeah. um, and you'd try to pressure a little bit more. Yeah. Disruption Protocol, Counter Spell, that's, you know, you can play around that. Knowing that it's there, a braid yep. is going to take care yep. of the Reckoner Bankbuster. Oh, that so was huge. Ooh, the braid on that is excellent. Where does Ricardo go from there? As we're going to see a bank bust on the other side now. Okay, now their counter spell was face up, so a pretty easy mm -hmm. kind of cancel. Yep. You know, essentially three mana counter spell. It has a little bit more upside there where you can tap one of your artifacts. Artifacts yep. are created cool. with your bank buster and your Fable of Mirror Breaker treasure tokens. No land for Ricardo, so clearing the way there potentially with a bank buster yeah. for another bank buster. So we're just busting all the banks now. All the banks are being busted. Uh-huh. Gonna draw some cards with that bank buster, get a land that's soaking Zan and yeah. Fable the Mirror Breaker. So yeah, it's just, you know, <laughs> the floodgates open. Exactly. Now that you cleared the way for the one counter spell, I really like how Karis has played this. Yep. No surprise here. Karis is a phenomenal magic player, someone I talk to quite a bit about mm -hmm. standard specifically, definitely his favorite format, and uh, always has innovative takes. You never really see a stock deck in yeah. Karis's hand. Looking Karis maybe here. is the one who stocks. <laughs> <laughs> Also, just uh, you know, seeing the way is clear as much as possible, as much as it can be, and uh, going for the win here. But Ricardo keeping keeping things in check with the Destroy Evil and the Flame Bless Bolt. Yep. But really needs to find some proactive plays to get himself back in here. Otherwise, he's just going to be defending against an onslaught. Yeah, some of the proactive plays you're definitely looking for, maybe Wandering Emperor here at mm -hmm. end step would be pretty good if Karis doesn't have a way to counter that. But Sanctuary Warden mm -hmm. is the card in these Jeskai decks uh, that is really awesome. Yeah. And big shout out to Caroline Party showing us all those cards at such a lightning fast speed <laughs> really helps uh, keep us all engaged uh, to these cards that are possible in each other's decks. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see too many uh, Arboreal Grazers this time around, though. Yeah, yeah, Not unfortunately. So much as the last, uh, Pro Tour. Caroline's favorite card, of course. <laughs> Blood Tithe Harvester joins the fray here for Karis, so it's just able to dig through the deck so much. We see a Razor Lash Transmogrant, and there you go. There is the Wandering Emperor that you predicted at the end step there, so that'll get something, at least, on the board yeah. for Ricardo. And, uh, you know, the Wandering Emperor, if left unchecked, can get you back into it, and he's going to need all the help he can get at this point. Yep, definitely can. Maybe not the card that has aged as well as yeah. we maybe thought. You know, the World Championship, the Wandering Emperor was basically in every single yeah. deck. And since then, uh, it has kind of went on a decline mm. and hasn't proven itself as the most powerful card. Fable the Mirror Breaker uh, said, move on over. I'll be taking that. <laughs> yeah, when white was a little more prevalent in the format, you would see Wandering Emperors everywhere just being yes. flashed in left, right, and center, hacking people down. Yep. Same with wedding announcement, yeah. but with the printing of a tally, where mm -hmm. these decks are just going way over the top of these, making a 1-1 one -one each turn is not what it no. used to be. Not going to cut it. So the Wandering Emperor assembling her Samurais, hoping to defend against the onslaught here of Karis. But has Karis perhaps run out of gas? He has got one more counter on... The Bank Buster, is that another Fable in hand? I saw Fable, blue card, which looked like Fable and Negate. So okay. great, great start there as well. And only one card from Ricardo, one unknown. But keep in mind the bottom right side of your screen there, that Memory Deluge, whenever you yeah. do hit land seven, uh, is going to refuel your hand to some really powerful stuff. You make Deluge sound very fancy. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. 
I practice my deluging. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, here's a spicy one. Nice. I was hoping we'd get to see her. She just got discarded yeah. in that round yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Sahili coming up, and Ricardo reading that one. We can read it as well with you. A really, you know, new card that I did not expect mm -hmm. to see a ton of. Yeah, no. There we go. Being able to create some thopters there, I mean, do some is scrying. Really yeah. Basically just a Planeswalker in the Rakdos deck that you really don't have access to. Some decks are playing maybe Kaido Shizuki, um, mm -hmm. you know, big Chandra, six mana Chandra. Yep. But outside of that, you don't have great Planeswalkers. And, you know, even this one is not super powerful. But, you know, Planeswalkers, when they get really, really powerful, you see, like, yeah. Chandra Torch of Defiance, how dominant that oh, was in the format. That's so such a good card. I'm glad they've toned down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sahili um, bringing her little sure. flappy friends along with her. The uh, Thumpters <laughs> gaining haste, taking care of the Wandering Emperor. Ooh. Oh, okay. One of my favorite cards here, Fires mm -hmm. of Victory. Kicking it to deal the one point of damage to Sahili <laughs> because Ricardo has no cards in hand. Oh, my goodness. And that Make Disappear ends up being an all-star. It looks like both knights coming in at Sahili. That is offering just one of the knights to be eaten up by the bank buster if Karas goes for it. Mm -hmm. So it's either an attack where maybe Ricardo has destroy evil or something to negate that, or it's just plenty fine getting a planeswalker off the battlefield and then casting something like Sunfall. I think Sunfall mm -hmm. is the biggest card that Karas could fall into a trap here. All right, let's see if it's there. Yeah, yeah. I believe he's just got the one copy of the Destroy Evil, so there's also the Aganjo, okay. perhaps. Sunfall is what would yeah. be the best for Ricardo here. Oh, definitely. Because you'd get that Bank Buster as well, but not there. Unfortunately, nothing happening at the moment for Ricardo. Just the one little samurai hanging out there, trying to hold down the fort up against the Flyers. Little Thopters. Yep, only two cards there for Karas with one more being banked up in the Bank Buster. <laughs> and I still see that Fable didn't catch the other one there with that quick, quick glance. Was that the Negate? I think it was Make Disappear, okay. which was already cast. Now, okay. there is a Transmogrant in the graveyard, it looks like, as well, mm -hmm. for Karas there in the top left of your screen. So have some access to some more gas, even if you don't want to progress anything more on the battlefield yeah. into a Wrath, into a Farewell. And being very careful not to crew up the Bank Buster into potential removal here. So just the Blood Tithe Harvester and the Thopters. And you can see, taking a look here at the graveyard of Karas Kakitis. Yeah, and these are the situations that are just really rough when these Grixis decks yeah. are able to duress away some early yeah. cards and then you're able to counter some key stuff from this Jeskai deck. The deck's not amazing at coming back. You need to have some setup turns. You need to have a lot of cards in hand in general. Yeah. yeah, that is something that the control decks thrive on, is card advantage. Yep. You know, you hate Ooh. to see... Oh, what is Sanctuary that? Warden in hand, so just needed land six for Ricardo. <sighs> Man, that's rough. Yep. Not finding it. Is that Disruption <clears throat> Protocol? It negate. Yep. negate. Negate and Sanctuary Warden there, so not what you wanted to draw here, and we'll see. Karas can also bring back Transmogrin here. This yeah. is a ton of damage. That's going to be it. Oh, man. Super rough for Ricardo. Not getting to land number six to get yeah. that angel down on the board, but Karas Kakitis picking up a victory. He's got to be happy with that. Yep. Mogged on Magic Nine Online. So doing some great work here so far. Always impressive to see someone at their first Pro Tour doing something this big. Maybe Benton Madsen vibes here from our last Pro Tour uh, with the first one there. So really cool stuff. All right, friends, we have plenty more action for you here at Pro Tour March the Machine. We'll be right with you after this break. <laughs>